Okay, students, I'm your physics teacher, and my name is Tiodros Kizal. Today, we'll see about liquid expansion and gas expansion, and also specific heat capacity, heat capacity, and latent heat capacity. And we have seen before the expansion of solid in linear volume and aerial expansion. Therefore, today we will start from expansion of liquid, expansion of liquid. In liquid, liquid expanses, expands or increased in volume because always liquid takes the shape of the material which is confined. Therefore, the volume is increasing in temperature have a large coefficient of volume expansion than solids. Solids. For liquids, we have two types of expansion, two types of expansion, and the first one is real expansion. When you say real expansion, real expansion is the actual expansion of the size of the liquid, the size of the liquid, and the second one is apparent expansion. Apparent expansion is the observed expansion of liquid, which may affected by the expansion of the container, because when liquid expands, liquids are placed in their some container. When it's heated up, the container as well as the liquid will expand both at the same time. And when we calculate the real, the real expansion, we must ignore the expansion or we must subtract the expansion of the container. Or after weeks, we subtract the expansion of the container, we get the real expansion of the liquid. And before we subtract the expansion of the container, we got the apparent expansion of the liquid. Therefore, real expansion is the actual expansion of the, the liquid, but the apparent one is the observed expansion of liquid. The observed expansion of the liquid. And the other thing is the law of volume expansion can be applied to the liquids because they are they have a volume expansion, they have volume expansion, and change in V is equal to V naught gamma times change in T. And real expansion, real expansion of liquid is equivalent to apparent plus the volume expansion of the container the volume expansion of the container therefore v change in v real is equivalent to apparent plus expansion of container expansion of container and if you substitute change in v as you know change in v is v naught gamma times change in t therefore for v real change in v real if it is real gamma real v naught times change in t gamma apparent gamma container and those are these all is what similar and if you take common for these two and cancel out you got that gamma real you take a common and dividing both sides by v naught change in t and this one also v naught change in t you got that gamma real gamma real is equivalent to gamma real, gamma apparent plus gamma of the container gamma of the container let us take one example one example here we are asked to calculate the real and the apparent expansion of the liquid, that means a water, if you have 1000 centimeter cube of water in a glass, in a glass, the container is what? A glass. And when it's heated from 20 to 120, this one is TC and this one is TH. 20 is TC and 20, 120 is TH. And gamma of glass is this much and gamma of water this much. First, let us take out the given. And change in T, it becomes 100 because 120 minus 20 is 100 and V naught, V naught is equivalent to 1000 centimeter cube. Therefore, 1000 centimeter cube is change of 2 meter cube, meter cube, or we can rewrite as it is. Therefore, by canceling this 3 0, we can write in the power of positive 3 and gamma of glass is given and gamma of water is also given. Now, we are asked to determine what? We are asked to determine the real and the apparent expansion, both. To do this, first, let us calculate the real, the real expansion, and after that, the apparent. First, to calculate the real expansion, we take V0 times gamma real. When you take gamma real, we will use gamma of water gamma of water, therefore gamma of water is expansion coefficient of water is 2.1 times in the power of minus 4 and V0 is 1 times in the power of positive 3 and the change in T is 100 degrees Celsius and if you multiply this all you got that 200 
no, 21 centimeter cube. And to get the apparent, to get the apparent, we must take, we must take gamma real and gamma apparent and gamma for the container relationship. First, we may calculate gamma of apparent by shifting gamma of container to the left. Therefore, when you shift this, gamma apparent is equal to gamma real minus gamma of the container and gamma real is expansion coefficient of liquid that is the water and gamma of container is expansion coefficient of the glass therefore we will subtract these two and multiplying by what one times 10 to the power of minus three here first we must calculate 2.1 times 10 to the power of minus four minus 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power of what minus six this is this is gamma apparent and this part is what v naught or the the expansion no the volume of the liquid before it's expand or the initial volume of the liquid and this one is change in temperature this one is change in temperature therefore finally when you calculate this all we got a final answer our final answer is 20 centimeter cube this one is the apparent expansion of the liquid the next point is expansion of gases gases expand gases expand much larger than that of liquid and solid as we said from solid liquids are expand more but here also gases expand larger than both that is liquid and solids this is because of the molecules of the gas are very far apart and can move freely than the molecules liquids are solid and liquid are solid and liquid we know that there is no volume expansion for gases this is because of the volume of the gases is detected by number of factors these are temperature pressure and the amount of the number of molecules present in the gas therefore we use the relationship between the volume the gas the volume of the gas and its temperature can be written as PV is equal to NRT. P stands for pressure. P is the pressure of the gas in Pascal. V is volume of the gas in meter cube. And N is number of moles of the gas. And T is the absolute temperature. And R is the universal gas constant. And this one is equivalent to 8.31. 8.31 value. Therefore, this one is a constant. And if a change in temperature occurs at a constant pressure it's possible to determine the change in volume of the gas using the ideal gas equation that is change change in rearranging this rearranging this you may you may take p is equal to change, p times change in v is equal to nr times change in t from this if you divide it, this by pressure over p this cancel out and change in volume becomes what nr change in t over what P over P and this is the equation which you use to determine the expansion of gases and the other thing is quantity of heat specific heat capacity and heat capacity first let us see the amount of heat, uh, heat energy raised by a temperature of a substance is depend on the first one is the type or the nature of the substance this one the first point it depends on the nature if the substance is either metal and metal or another substance another factor and the other thing is the mass of the substance if the mass is large or small and the other is the temperature rise required the temperature rise required and when you express this mathematically the unit energy is called joule another unit is called calorie and they have a relation joule and calorie one calorie is always equivalent to 4.2 joule 4.2 joule and what mean by specific heat capacity and heat capacity specific heat capacity and heat capacity let us see this specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy raised raised the temperature the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of what one kilogram of substance one kilogram of substance by one kelvin by one kilovolt the mass is here it's specified and we can explore this mathematically to explore this c c is the specific capacity small letter c q over m times 
change in the m is the mass and q is what the heat energy and if you make crisscross you can calculate or you can make crisscross and when you make crisscross q is equal to mc change in t and c is the specific heat capacity m is the mass and change in t is the temperature and the other thing is the units for this specific heat capacity specific heat capacity is expressed in terms of joule per kilogram degree celsius or joule per kilogram kelvin this one is joule per kilogram kelvin and or sometimes we can express as joule per kilogram changing uh, joule per kilogram degree celsius because we can use either degree celsius or kelvin because of here we use what change in temperature change in temperature in celsius is equivalent to change in temperature in kelvin you can use either of the two either kelvin or celsius the other thing is its capacity its capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of a body by one kelvin but if it is specific heat capacity the energy required to raise a one kilogram substance of a one kilogram substance by one kelvin here the mass is not specified for heat capacity therefore they have a difference here the specific capacity is the amount of energy to raise a temperature of what one kilogram of substance by one kelvin but here the mass is not specified for unknown mass or for whatever it is mass to raise one kilogram of substance the energy required is the heat capacity the heat capacity and mathematical to express this since it, the mass is neglected and it is symbolized by capital letter c c is equal to q over change in t and the unit for this heat capacity is joule per degree celsius or joule per kelvin joule per kelvin and if you make crisscross q or the heat capacity the heat energy is equal to c times change in t change in t and specific heat capacity is small letter c and heat capacity is capital letter c and they are related by they are related by c heat capacity is equal to q over change in t specific heat capacity is q is mc change in t therefore you can substitute in the place of q mc change in t and you got that heat capacity is equal to mc change in t change in t is cancelled by change in t and heat capacity is equivalent to mass times specific heat capacity and this one is specific heat capacity and this one is heat capacity and m is the mass m is the mass let us take one example calculate the quantity of heat energy required to heat two kilogram of block of iron from 20 degrees celsius to 100 degrees celsius this one is t initial or tc and this one is th or t final then let us take the given when you take out the given mass is how much t kilogram and change in temperature becomes 140 minus 20 is what 120 and c i that means specific heat capacity of iron is equal to 470 joule per kilogram degree celsius degree celsius and we are asked to determine the heat energy therefore to do this heat energy is equivalent to mc change in t and you can substitute the mass is 2 kilogram and change in t is 470 joule per kilogram degree celsius multiplied by 120 degree celsius and finally you got 112,800 joule and this this value is expressed in terms of tens 1.128 times 10 to the power of 5 joule and this one is the energy required to raise a temperature of iron from 20 to 140 degrees celsius how much mass 2 kilogram of iron 2 kilogram of iron this is all about today until next time have a nice